This is the Rocky Mountain Growler 40, an aluminum hardtail that is wildly capable and priced under $2,000. A very impressive value in these post-pandemic bike boom times, and quite possibly my favorite hardtail I've ridden thus far. A huge thank you goes out to the team at Rocky Mountain for sending me this bike to demo and review. I really appreciate it. That's the intro, let's go ahead and dive into the Growler. The Growler is offered in three different variants. The Growler 20 for $1,399, the Growler 40 at $1,799, and the top end Growler 50 for $2,199. The pricing and the pictures that I just showed are for the 2022 model year Growlers, which should be out relatively soon. In my research, the only difference between this bike and the 2022 model is the paint job. The frame geometry and specs are basically all the same. So this video is relevant for at least another year. The Growler 40 has 140 millimeters of travel from a SR Suntour Raiden 34 Boost Air Fork. This was my first time using a nicer SR Suntour fork, not one of those budget coil forks they put on low-end bikes, and it performed well. My biggest criticisms with the fork is it doesn't have the o-ring on it and it also doesn't have the suggested air pressure chart printed on the fork. So setting up this fork takes a little bit of extra effort than a fork that does come with those things. In a quick google search I found the suggested air pressure chart online, but it is in kilograms. Ugh. I'm a big stupid American and I need it in pounds. Again a quick google search I was able to find a converter from kilograms to pounds. I guess it's not the end of the world. 12-speed Shimano Dior group set, which we'll talk about the cranks a little bit later. Shimano MT4100 two-piston hydraulic disc brakes with 180 millimeter rotors. The pads are resin with resin only rotors, which is pretty typical in this price range, but also kind of a bummer. The levers are the longer two-finger style blades, which they're fine. I just prefer the shorter versions. This has the Rocky Mountain Toonie dropper post with 170 millimeters of travel on this size large. This bike does have a short seat tube, so I had to run the post pretty high for pedaling. And finally, we have WTB rims laced to Shimano hubs with a WTB Vigilante up front and a WTB Trail Boss out back, both in a 29 by 2.6 inch width. I weighed the bike with my pedals and converted tubeless, and the bike weighs in at 31.86 pounds. That's pretty good for a size large under $2,000. I really like the way this bike rides. It strikes a pretty amazing balance of daily rideability with progressive enough numbers to send it. The head angle is slack at 64 degrees, but the bike isn't crazy stupid long that it's uncomfortable to pedal around. Climbing on this bike was average. This bike is lighter than some of my other bikes, and with a 75 degree C tube angle, it put me in a pretty good pedaling position to grind up some hills. I wasn't like blown away by its climbing abilities, but I also wasn't gasping for air once I got to the top. This bike is clearly more designed for descending, and one of the first places I took this bike to was Spider Mountain. I was a bit concerned by the sticker on the fork that says, not for downhill use, but it did fine and I didn't die. If you took this bike to a bike park repeatedly, I think this fork would begin to get overwhelmed, but I'm assuming most people aren't going to do that. For an aluminum frame at a pretty rough park, I found it to be fairly right. forgiving. This bike isn't as stiff as my Salsa Timberjack, but if I were to ride a bike park often on a hardtail, I would reach for a steel frame. When this bike was pointed downhill, I did have a very big smile on my face. Like that. <laughs> The slack head angle offers reassurance when approaching steep technical lines, and it also encourages you to be upfront and active on the bike. The 2.6 inch Vigilante tire up front does an excellent job maintaining traction, and the moderately long wheelbase feels very planted at high speeds. Okay, that's all good and fun, but I don't ride a bike park every day, and I'm guessing you probably don't either, so let's go see how this thing rides on a normal trail. I found this bike to be a bit more playful than the geometry chart would suggest. With a fairly high stack number and the wheelbase also not being incredibly stupid long, I felt like I was in a good position to pop off of features, and as a slightly below average jumper, I felt pretty comfortable leaving the ground on this bike. 
We found this steep technical line at our local trails that I've never seen before in like 10 years of going here. I don't know how I missed these things, but it was pretty sketchy and I stood there and eyed it up for like 10 minutes. I was pretty nervous to hit this for the first time on a hardtail, but the moment my front tire went over that edge, I knew this bike would have no problem handling it. This thing is just really good at descending. Could you hit this line on a cheaper, more traditional hardtail? Yes. Would it feel as controlled or composed? Probably not. My friend Dan also really loved this bike. This dude rides a $5,000 plus Revel Rascal, and he recently just bought a new Pivot Trail 429, and he was still super stoked to ride this sub $2,000 hardtail. Yeah, it's too fast, I couldn't get you. And that's when you know it's really good if a bike snob enjoys it. It is safe to say that I really like this bike, and I honestly could not find that much to dislike about it. This has been an awesome bike to demo, and I was hoping to ride it some more, but then this happened. I put this in the video to be completely transparent, but allow me to explain a little bit. This incident does not reflect the quality of the Rocky Mountain Growler, in my opinion. It's a Shimano crankset and bottom bracket, which I've used on countless bikes, and I've never had this issue before. This particular growler was sent to me in used condition, as it was a demo bike for other media outlets before me, and as we all know, demo bikes are ridden pretty hard. When I received the bike, I did torque every bolt on this bike down to specification, and the cranks never once felt loose during my test period. I've had crank arms come loose before on bikes, and when that happens, it is super obvious. I cleaned up the crank and bottom bracket after this incident, re-greased everything, and unfortunately it just will not reinstall properly, so that is the end of my test period. I am super bummed that this happened while the bike was in my possession, but again, I don't see this as a Rocky Mountain quality control issue, or even a Shimano one. I've had a lot of Shimano cranks on all kinds of different bikes, and they've always been great. I am still not entirely sure how this happened, but sometimes these freak accidents occur. Anyone that wants to take their trail riding to the next level? Maybe you're a newish rider and you've outgrown your Trek Marlin, and you're the type of person that knows you want to do drops, you want to hit jumps, you want to do bigger features, you're going to seek out gnarlier enduro lines. This bike is perfect for that, and it won't cost you a fortune. If you are looking for a mountain bike to just casually pedal around, I would recommend something else. But if you do want a hardtail that will easily progress along with you, this thing is amazing for it. Since every bike has to fit into some sort of category these days, I feel like this bike falls nicely between the trail and enduro segment, so we're gonna call it an in-trails bike? No. Oh. No. That sounds horrible. The price. I feel like this bike is a bargain at $1,800. There's no real need to upgrade anything right away. The geometry. It's a fast, fun, versatile bike. Enough said. And finally, the weight. No, this isn't a featherweight race bike, but considering the price and how capable this bike is, sub 32 pounds in a size large is impressive. The frame protection on this bike is lacking. There is a stick on chainstay protector, but it doesn't do anything to reduce the noise of chain slap. There's also no down tube protection on this bike. I was stoked to ride this bike out of the box, and I didn't feel the need to upgrade anything immediately, but if I were to, here's what I would do. I would get nicer brake rotors and metal pads. That upgrade alone really increases your stopping performance and it isn't the most expensive upgrade out there. Nitpicky stuff, I would like to run a longer dropper post to bring that saddle down even more, but again, it's not a necessary upgrade. And lastly, if you did want to trail ride this bike more, you could get some lighter, faster rolling tires. So let's see where the Rocky Mountain Growler 40 stacks up on the Cobra score. What is that, you ask? It's my new scoring system. I know you don't know about it because no one watched the nine minute video I made about it. <laughs> what? what a waste. Starting with specs. All of these components work fine, but nothing here is really high end, so it gets a four out of 10. Styling and features. The Growler has everything a bike needs to earn a standard five points. 
While the paint job is pretty cool and I do think it is a good looking bike, it isn't super captivating where I need to give it any extra points, so it gets a 5 out of 10. For the weight category, 31.86 pounds in a size large for $1,800, that's an easy 6 out of 10. The geometry of this bike feels incredible to me. It's progressive enough to future-proof itself for at least a few years, and it isn't stupid long low and slack where it's only good at one thing, so I'm gonna give it a very strong 6 out of 10. Any aggressive hardtail under $2,000 in this day and age seems like a bargain, and pair that with the fact that you could ride this bike completely stock and still enjoy it? Easy 6 out of 10. Sure, this thing goes up hills okay, but it isn't that eager to do it, nor is it mind-blowing. 4 out of 10. This thing is fairly quick and responsive, but you aren't going to win any races on it. It could be fun on a short cross-country track, but it's only going to get a 4 out of 10. This is a solid option as a trail bike, and I could see it being someone's only bike. As you get older though, that lack of rear suspension takes its toll, but I'm still happy to give the Growler a 6 out of 10. This bike is very capable when pointed downhill, although I do worry about this fork after repeated downhill use not being up to the challenge. Despite its confident geometry, it's still a budget aluminum hardtail, so I'm going to give it a 4 out of 10. I was always eager to grab this bike and ride it, it made me laugh, it felt good when things got sketchy, and then also seeing my friends have a blast on it as well, 7 out of 10. That gives the Growler a score of 52 out of 100, which actually ties it for first place against the Scott Spark RC. When compared against other hardtails on the list, the Growler ranks the best. The NS was held back by its 32mm stanchion fork and 36 pound weight, and while the San Quentin 1 is a great bike, it is also $700 cheaper than the Growler, so it kind of makes sense it doesn't score as high. So if you're looking for an aggressive, trail hardtail under $2,000, I really think the Rocky Mountain Growler 40 should be high on your search list. As always, I do appreciate your time, thank you so much for watching, and again a massive thank you to Rocky Mountain Bikes for sending me this growler. I had an awesome time riding and reviewing this bike, and I'm actually kind of sad to send it back. That's all I've got for today, let me know down in the comments what you think of the Rocky Mountain Growler, and until the next one, Stay rowdy within reason.